Overlooking the Virunga Mountains range in Uganda, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo, a Chuya forest sometimes referred to as a bamboo forest is a marvel that stands on the border of newly created Rwanda district and Chisoro district. <laughs> Echuya Forest holds historical significance as one of the first original homes of the Batwa or pygmy race of people who used to entirely rely on the forest as a hunting and gathering ground. <laughs> In the Albertine Rift Valley, Echuya lies at an altitude of 2,270 to 2,570 meters, making it one of the few forests in the world on a high altitude and also acting as a home to 152 bird species, of which 18 are endemic to the region. Echuya, which has for long been known for its bamboo, over the years has been losing out on its identity with the disappearance of bamboo due to increased human activity. Bamboo, initially used to cover almost 40% of the forest, numbers which have significantly shrunk to about 20%. Went there when the, the forest was absolutely degraded. It was a grazing land, the bamboo was almost finished, the forest was completely degraded. And the study that we conducted in 1996 proved to us that Ichuya forest is one of the most biodiverse forests in Uganda. But nobody was taking care of it, not even National Forest Authority. So we decided we needed to go there and restore that forest reserve. For some time now, officials from the National Forestry Authority have been working together with Nature Uganda to restore some of the bamboo that has been lost over the years. So we started here. It was like a demonstration site. So we brought groups around the adjacent to this reserve they came here, we uprooted the rhizomes, we cleared here, we first cleared here, then we uprooted the rhizomes, bamboo rhizomes, we dug pits and planted. One way in which they are trying to conserve the environment and the forest is by establishing bamboo nurseries to deter people from going back to the forests. You cannot tell people to conserve nature when actually they are poor and they do not have alternatives. So that's why we are looking at balancing nature and sustainable living of communities. Bamboo is a very resourceful plant that is much favored by local communities. The areas of Rwanda and Chisora are also said to be densely populated, more reason as to why the bamboo in Echuya has been targeted. The dependence on the forest bamboos is very high. So one of the interventions we are promoting in partnership with NFA is uh, bamboo domestication in and outside the Chuya Forest. Inside the Chuya Forest Reserve, two hectares have been gazetted for bamboo and a mother garden which has already been established. There are people who cleared here, uh, people who dug the pits, even the planting was done by collaborative forest management groups around the Chuya. Where the bamboo has grown, the trees give a magical shade that is evergreen with the shoots that explain the significance of culture, not only in Africa but also all over Asia, where it is duly appreciated, but that is not the story. Colonization of bamboo is happening nearby. As you are heading to Kisoro district from the nearby Rwanda district, you notice that this place, which was once a bamboo heaven, has quickly become extinct. The makaranga tree that is quickly growing here is taking over the bamboo, which forms a livelihood for the people in this particular area. Environmentalists, however, say that they have devised ways of liberating the bamboo. We want to clean around all these, around all these, the remaining bamboos here, so that they can grow better. We cut the old ones, which can't do anything, in a cluster. As rich as the Chua forest may be, Muchua Swamp is one gem that derives its roots from the forest and it is in this high altitude swamp that you will find the globally threatened Albertine endemic grower's swamp wobbler, a small bird with a large significance. For the empowered members of the community, especially the women who have abandoned going to the forest for bamboo, it is the simple training in making handcrafts that they have received that is coming to their aid. And away from Rwanda and Kisoro districts to Zana along Entebbe Road in Wakiso district, Nudin Kasuma is minting money by adding value to bamboo. Uh, bamboo has a lot of benefits. Everything that you can think about, furniture or anything that you can use in the home, 
you can make out of bamboo. Yeah. Nordin is one of the founders of Bugali Company Limited, which has high demand for bicycle frames made from bamboo and backlot. A customer will send you the geometries of what kind of bike he likes, or it gives you the sizes. Maybe is a is it gives you the height, his height and his weight. Mm. Then you can determine the size of that bike and the type of the bike. These are sold to the international market at a price of about 400 US dollars. For Nurdin, this has since changed his life and he believes that Ugandans should learn to appreciate the value of bamboo further. But for a standard bike with simple components, it will run for $1,500. That we are at Bugali, because we have been concentrating so much on making the frames, we sell a standard frame at $400. On the next episode of NTV Green, we visit Mavira Forest to try and track the Uganda mangabe, an endemic species of monkey living in the forest. Sohel Mugabe, NTV Green.